Might I suggest an atomic fart? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
the Godzilla animated series. I don't know if you guys have watched that recently, but it is essentially American Showa era Godzilla in like 20 minute snippets. The show is fantastic. I think it's fantastic. Fantastic? Uh, Yes. Really? Yes. I, I mean, I would say, like you said, it is more true is, blue Godzilla. It, exactly. You know, true. kaiju versus kaiju battles. Because what Absolutely. else do you do in a Godzilla show? Exactly. I mean, you blow them up with uh, F-15s and... Uh, <laughs> with a torpedo. A <laughs> torpedo took down Godzilla. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess one more point, too, just to throw out there is, uh, again, can, talking about relevancy, you know, the movie was so polarizing and 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 i, I guess i'm even polar it just no one liked it and toho you know it, it it they took godzilla off the bench they put him on the bench they took him out, like you got to get back in and they started you know spitting out um the millennium series godzilla 2000 in my opinion also highly underrated um and Good movie. the film really that solid. followed the film that followed gmk godzilla mothra king Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack that is a mouthful <laughs> um, that is also to me top tier Godzilla, and yes. two cool things about it is that it was directed by Heisei era Gamera director. I am not going to pronounce his name. I don't even have it in front of me. I should. I'm going to butcher it. But he took uh, he reinterpreted Godzilla for that film, and it is a very different Godzilla. It's a very angry, vengeful. Yeah. I think it, it, yeah, it, it is such a cool. It's reinterpretation. the monster. Yes, and uh, from the souls of like those that died, the Japanese that died during you know World War II, it tackles nationalism. It's a very interesting movie. Um, it is also ridiculous. It's fun, <laughs> um, but that that is, in my opinion, that's a great way to reinterpret Godzilla properly. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Ruben is speaking very highly of this movie. <laughs> uh, it it from what I'm getting is it, it reintroduced a new era that has blossomed into what we have now. But Haven, I'm I can't That's help but giving notice it too your much face. credit. I can't help but notice the uh, <laughs> disdain and the sour look on your face. It looks like you disagree. Go yes. ahead. I have some visuals, if I may. So oh, do, okay. do, do, do. He Here's the modern. <laughs> here's the modern Godzilla we all know and love. Monster Fair- uh, Monsterverse era. Yes. Monsterverse. Yeah. Very He's classic cute. to the original. Yeah. Very cute. It's Funko. Now, here's Godzilla 98. <laughs> a Dollar what? Tree iguana. <laughs> That's what this movie is. They made a monster out of an iguana. Do you see this becoming that anytime soon? Unless, I mean, it's one, <laughs> unless it's one of those things that you put it like, you know, like the cups you put the little figures in the water and it grows. But That's irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> Which is kind of what they did in this movie, in that opening montage, right? Oh, that montage. Don't get me... St- it was nothing but lizards laying eggs. If you took Godzilla out of the title, it could have been any monster movie, and, and it would have been better. Fair. Agreed. The, <laughs> okay. uh, although, how how amazing is that score? I, I know, I know uh, the guanas are silly, but I the can't score... Save it. The score is bone chilling when the when the bomb goes off and it's like it's got the choir. It is very. I was unmoved. Very chilling. <laughs> because so, Haven, you... Haven is your is your biggest gripe the fact that he is just a giant iguana, or is there is there a little bit more to this movie? I mean, it's partly like it feels like I'm watching a Simpsons parody with all the actors in it. You got Bart Simpson as the receptionist, Kent Brockman as the main anchor. You got Carl and Moe running around with a VHS tape recording to no one. If this movie was never made, do you think Godzilla would have resurged, had a resurgence in the way it did? And this is just for Haven to answer. Do you really think this? Okay. Why do you think that? Because like what Toho did, they did the same track as Superman. Everyone loves Superman. Superman had a great run, but then you kill him and you have some knockoffs come in, which are good knockoffs. Like, you know, they didn't stop making monster movies after that. They went on and made stuff with Gamera, Mothra, expand on that. But then, you know, you go back to the well, you got to bring back the OG and that's what they did. And like Godzilla 98 does nothing for that. Like, you could have just not had that movie and it would have been fine. The reason that movie exists is to be like, oh, I'll show you. Here's Godzilla. And like to, sell all the to-, directors. to sell toys as well. 
<laughs> oh yeah, you want to talk about the toys? The only toy I found was a Taco Bell drink <laughs> holder. Yes, the Taco Not Bell. Not even a Burger King. <laughs> hey, oh, I remember man. the school supplies, the erasers, the peaches, mm -hmm. the oh, pens, God. the notebooks. Yeah, but you, there was some, those are mostly you made from the mistakes. Cartoon. You could erase them, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just erase, erase uh, Godzilla yes. out of existence. Well, let me ask you this. So, for you, Haven, since mm -hmm. you're so against this, we 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 sort of know the story. Uh, Ruben kind of briefed us on the history behind the look and feel of Godzilla. Yes. What if Godzilla were more visually accurate? Would that have helped? I don't think so because this whole movie was made to be like a Universal Studios ride. They wanted the grandeur. They wanted the franchise. I mean, you could have had like the guy in the suit from the original like 55 movie walking around and it wouldn't have done anything for Godzilla because Godzilla fans love Godzilla no matter what. Is there a dip? Maybe. But you still have those hardcore fans that are going to go back to the VHS tapes, the dvds hbo max to watch the godzilla they know love and want and 98 doesn't do anything to further that it made american fans fall out of love with godzilla <laughs> well we obviously know the reaction to it because i believe they had wanted to always reboot godzilla but i believe that was moved up because it would it just needed to happen Correct. and we know we know uh the original creators distaste for 98 because they put this version in final wars was that what it was zilla yes a zilla and they mm. put zilla yeah because they <laughs> they they didn't want to use the word god because it wasn't it was just zilla no, and likeness it's, god's it's horrible don't put that name <laughs> on that character yeah but we did get a movie with zilla fighting the original godzilla and I don't think that fight lasted very long. Oh, oh no. no. So yeah. obviously there was a reaction to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. It, it was a one. It was, well, not one hit because he whipped him with his tail and then he hit him with the breast <laughs> into the he Sydney Opera House. He bitch slapped him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I like, when you question, can get though, taken down by a bitch slap or a torpedo, you're not a real Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> question, though. So it's 2004. Kind of go back in the Wayback Machine. Think about 2004. Okay. You know. Pop culture, I feel like the, the, the love, the nostalgia hasn't really gone into full swing in 2004. So if Toho were to come back with the original plans and reintroduce Godzilla for the 50th anniversary, does Suitmation, does all that stuff, like, gel in 2004? Like, I don't I don't know. I don't know if we were there huh. yet to, like, the, the hardcore fans would have eaten it up, but with a mainstream audience... I think it would have worked because, like, the people who are going to see a Godzilla movie, they've seen Godzilla movies. They know what to expect. Like, they are happy with the suitmation and everything. But in 2004, it'd also be done with some CGI. So it's not going to be, like, fully, like, you know, rubber rubbing against rubber when they're fighting Ghidorah and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we could all agree too that regardless of what happened with ninety eight, twenty fourteen would have we would have gotten an merit. That was always yes. going to be in the cards, yeah, no matter that what. That had nothing to do. Ninety eight had nothing to do with getting the monster. Really, really, because I think it almost had reverse psychology. Uh -huh. I mean, I, would, I mean, hey. Hey, I'm here. I'm just here to mediate. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not going to put my pin. I don't think I'm just. You want to get this, this ring? I'm going to posit this. Let me pontificate for you guys. <laughs> if not for the experience of '98, do you think when 2014's version rolled around that people would have said, "Okay, I want to give this one a shot" because I remember the Matthew Broderick Godzilla. <laughs> No, they remember the Matthew Broderick and be like, I'm staying away from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, Ruben, do you, do you think because of uh, the experience, we're going to call it the experience of 98, do you think the that happening. kind of pushed the some... The experience. <laughs> <laughs> the happening of 98. Do you think the fever that dream. did push more fans to, to watch 2014s because uh, although Godzilla was a little thick, he was a little bit more oh, accurate. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I think with three Cs. I love I love th me some thick Godzilla, especially like Shin Godzilla. Those the thighs, oh, so good. I'm what, like, yes. What did they call him? Bod Bodzilla or something? Bodzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Bodzilla, Daddyzilla. Um, so yeah. Oh man, you know it, it's interesting because I think that I I always kind of put it into to two camps, and I just just I feel like that's just the reality of it is. 
you've got your hardcore OG fans like the three of us. They're going to go see it regardless. And then you got the mainstream audiences who like, see, I think, I think the hardcore fans do go back despite, you know, in, despite what happened in 98, but I don't know. I don't, I am curious to see if you were to go back and somehow look at the demographics for the 2014 version, it, what, you know, what the ratio was. Cause I feel like for whatever reason, I think the fact that it had Brian Cranston, um, you know, that probably had, helped for about five minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've mixed feelings about, about, <laughs> I love Gareth Edwards as a director. Uh, I love rogue one. Um, yes. and, and I like monsters, but his, his 2014 film, it does a lot of things good and there's some things on like the brain cranston thing like how do you how do you have brain cranston and just get rid of him in five minutes i know they made that whole trailer when the movie came out seem like he was in it throughout like this is going to be cranston versus godzilla heisenberg versus yeah. godzilla <laughs> breaking god we're going to call it that breaking god godzilla. i love it I breaking love god it. zilla yes um well what? is that is that hollywood's way of uh, compensating by you know by saying hey you had Matthew Broderick you had Hank Azaria you had all these other guys well we got you know Walter White Is Hank and, Millie Bobby, Millie, and Millie, Bobby Bobby Millie Bobby Millie Bobby Brown Millie Bobby Brown which, oh yeah. my god so do you think it was kind of it was kind of baiting by using uh, the current big stars at the time because of what had happened before they said you know maybe people are going to have Godzilla hesitancy in the states so should we have uh, star power to kind of put butts in the seats. I think so. I think that was one of the the biggest drawbacks to ninety eight Godzilla, which is that like you, the cast is very random, very random. <laughs> um, you have you know three fourths of the voices of the Simpsons in one area, and then you've got <laughs> I I I don't no. know how what everyone's feelings are on Matthew Broderick. I I like Matthew Broderick, and uh, he's good. And, and Je John Renault, like I'm like interesting choice. He doesn't yeah. really do a whole lot. Um, but Matthew Broderick is doing a very good uh, Mark Wahlberg in the happening in a lot of <laughs> movies, especially like when they find out when when they find out that uh, his ex girlfriend stole the top secret tape. Which you know you never label a tape top secret. Yeah, by the way. literally. <laughs> especially if you, don't you want never it to do be that. Stolen. <laughs> never rule number one. And they they ask him. Did you give our story, our 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 secrets away? And he goes, "What? What? No." no, no. <laughs> okay. Well, let me let me ask. You. I think we kind of talked about this uh, already, but okay. Say ninety eight never takes off. Mm -hmm. It never makes it to the states because I mean, obviously Toho was or had already had issues uh, in pre production. Obviously, approving the design of Godzilla. We all. So know you're that. saying that the film falls apart in pre production? Is that, in is that what you're proposing? And it, okay. And it never happens. So where where does the course of history take us as far as Godzilla? Hmm. Haven, yeah, you, would you want to go first or? I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think we would have ended up right where we're at now, because really, yeah, Toho oh, okay. was still making movies. It was focusing more on like the B and C list, like kaiju's, but. They were gonna get back to bring Godzilla back. There's no way you leave your ace in the hole dead. It was gonna come back. Maybe, you know, a little less angry. Maybe it would have been more protector. <laughs> maybe a sort of different version, but okay. still pretty close to what we had now, leading up to the MonsterVerse era. How how do we get Godzilla uh, to the West? I think. Or the did same, it even matter? Yeah, I think it's gonna be the same way it does. Like. VHS tapes dub, HBO Max, like the streaming wow. services, we still would be getting Godzilla how we used to get Godzilla. You know, TM, TCM, Turner Classic Movies, all that shit. I know. I, I see. I'm not I'm not sure about that. Like, agreed that, you know, you still have the tapes and you still have all the, the you know, the various ways of consuming Godzilla. But if you don't, if you don't keep it, if you don't. If you're not if you're not getting new fans on a constant basis, like does anyone care in 2004? You know what? Going off topic for a second, that's another thing bad with Godzilla 98. He never does the atomic breath. You know, I, I, I actually I re looked into that not too long ago. Long ago, when I rewatched that, uh, and I believe they didn't think it it made sense physically. 
and it's a giant anatomically for him to have atomic <laughs> breath. But I think they kind of compromised uh, in one scene that where Godzilla's roar was so powerful that it ignited things around him. <laughs> oh, is that it. Yeah. what? Is that yeah. what? That's it was? another yeah. fucking okay. thing. He never does the OG roar. You, you get a little bit of it here and there, a little a, bit, a yeah. little bit. No, it's, they it's... play it in the trailer, but they do not play it like once. Like it's never. You don't hear the iconic. <laughs> I, I thought I thought I heard him say it when he was uh, when he was. I will go on I, record when he like when he like grabs yeah. the building and he's like y- like roaring into the sky. You kinda yeah, kind of, but it's hear. it's a very I mean, like. It's not distinct. It's, it's not like that. Scott. Yeah, they tweaked it a little bit no, for copyright, no. Ruben. When closing out this discussion, what do you want people to know about Godzilla ninety eight? Uh, <laughs> about Godzilla ninety eight. Uh, I will say. Hmm. Closing statements is that again, it's not it's not his best outing, but it isn't. It, it's important. It, it's 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 no, it's not. <laughs> it, okay, <laughs> it, look at it. Look at it this way: Godzilla '98. While I have a huge affinity for Joel Schumacher's Batman's, uh, Godzilla '98 is the Joel Schumacher uh, 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 equivalent, and oh, like God. like. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. If we don't, if those don't happen, we might not have Batman Begins. We don't. Yeah. Oh, so I'll just leave it there. I'll you're just talking slander. <laughs> hey, all right, everyone, <laughs> chill. Godzilla '98 can suck a fart. <laughs> the movie is about an iguana stealing everything from Independence Day and Jurassic Park. It is uninspired, unoriginal. Good night. Might I suggest an atomic fart? Okay. Uh, <laughs> for fish uh, one, one, one last. Uh, I want to leave you guys with this, and we will right, close. Right. Our, I just want to say, picture it. P- I'm pitching. A, I'm pitching a movie. God, because we we've got uh-huh. the Taco Bell tie-ins. Oh, Godzilla and... versus the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Yes, I'll take oh, it. All right, P man. Oh yeah. my god, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I <ate> Chihuahua. <laughs> Godzilla versus Hollywood uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. all right guys well those are our thoughts on godzilla 98 what are yours is godzilla 98 more important than you think leave a comment below be sure to like and subscribe for more content like news reactions and uh heated atomically heated discussions like this (laughs) right we gotta we have to keep it very themed anyway uh i am your host as always eugene i'm haven huge fan and a very and special Andrew. thank you. Yep, very special thank you to Ruben for mm-hmm. joining us. Give him yes. a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Woo! Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. This has been The 616 Show.